have this vivid memory of sitting in the bathtub one time and just crying. I think I punched my dad once. You're not in charge of me right now. Like, you just won't leave me alone. I had an epidural on my back, so I couldn't move very well. She just wanted me to keep pushing and keep going. Everybody had one. Like, if you didn't have one, you were looked down upon. This is a show where teenagers share their experiences growing up in today's world. I'm your host, Dr. RJ, and this is A Teen's Perspective. How are you guys feeling today? That's what I want to know. Like today, if you had a rate today, if you like think today has been so amazing, give me high fives. Everybody today has been amazing. High fives. Oh man, some good days. All right. If today is like, ah, I'm not sure about it. Give me one of these. You mean going to shake your hands so I can say it's just, oh, I'm not really sure. I see a few people like, oh, I'm not sure. If today has been pretty much terrible, give me thumbs down. If today has been terrible, thumbs down. I don't see any thumbs down. That's good. So today has been a good day. So if you're having an amazing day and I can call on you, raise your hand. Amazing day and I can call on you, raise your hand. Hold on, I got to scan through the cameras. Any hands? Oh, I see Ali. Okay, here we go. Ali, you can unmute yourself so I can talk to you. Well, so far it's been a good day because like I got to wake up like when I wanted to, like I got to sleep in. And so that was nice. And then I uh, spent some time with my family and we had fun and I played Minecraft with my sister and yeah, it's just been a nice chill day so far. It's been good. That is great. Now let's examine this. Why is he having a good day? And he mentioned because he got to sleep in. So when you think of sleeping in, why is that a good day? It's probably because it makes him feel good. Like he doesn't feel tired. You got to play Fortnite. You got to hang out with his family. The reason why this is important for you guys to know is because There are strategies to feeling good, okay? So there are strategies. So there are strategies to you having an amazing day. There's also strategies for you having a terrible day. So if you are uh, having a terrible day, raise your hand if it has to do with your family, all right? So for all the people, you can put in the chat too. So if you're having a terrible day, raise your hand if it has something to do with the people that live in your house, So I see a couple of people, Antoine and Blaine. Now, does anyone you want to share about it or you just want to tell me? Because I'm all about sharing. So let's see, uh, me too. Oh, mine was an injury. So my day isn't terrible, but it could be better just for that reason, arguing with my mom a bit. So let's see, so that's the thing. So this is what I want to share with you today is strategies on how to have a great day. So are there strategies to have a bad day? We already said yes. One person already kind of, mentioned it and say, hey, I had an argument with my parents, all right? So in the chat, tell me, what are some other strategies? Because remember, when you have a bad day, it's not by accident. It's a strategy. Everything we do are strategies. So tell me, what are some strategies from having a bad day? If you wanted to purposely have a bad day, what do you need to do? See if you guys know. Sky says, be negative. Yes. What else? If you want to have a bad day, get hurt. (laughs) Yeah. That's one way to annoy other people. Don't do my chores, have an attitude, be mean around people, be negative, focus on negative beliefs. I can tell Jamie's been in my program for a little while, start arguments, argue with everyone. Yes. Kick a police officer. Yes. That would be a very bad day. Be annoying. What else? Look at the bad side of everything. Yes. This person has been in my program. Complain, isolate yourself. You hear this? I hope you guys are like, Listening to this, at least taking notes. Get in trouble. Tell yourself the day is bad. Yes, man, you guys are making me proud. Do not, let's see, exaggerate things, procrastinate. Don't sleep, make mistakes. All right, so did you see what all this is about? I hope you guys are listening to this. Anora says, just don't smile. So these are actually strategies for having a bad day. All right, you see them. Procrastinate, be annoying, or get on people's nerves or start arguing with people. Now, my question to you is this. Is it possible to avoid all of those things? Is it possible to not start an argument with someone? Is that possible? Is it possible to not look at the negative side of things, right? Yeah, everybody's saying yes. So I'm going to do something with you really quickly. I want you to do it with me. All right, so everyone do this with me. I want you to take three deep breaths with me, okay? So three deep breaths. Do it with me. You don't have to close your eyes. Just deep, take a deep breath with me. I don't see you guys moving. There we go. I see Ali. All right, that's two, one more. All right, now this is what I want you to do. I want everyone to look up and smile. Look up and smile. 
like the big smile, a big smile, a really big smile. Hannah's doing it. I see Cole, you're not doing it, man. I see Garen is doing it. I see Albert, you're not doing it. What's up with that? Eve, come on. Yeah, there you go. I see Kaylee. So this is a, something really cool. I want to show you something. Try to be mad right now. Try to be mad. Try to be upset. It's very, very difficult to do. If you just start smiling, if you look up and you smile, you're going to notice something in your brain happens. You're going to start to feel better. It's a cool thing. Now, why am I sharing all this with you? The reason why I'm sharing this with you is because life happens in your mind. That is what happens. Life happens in your mind. Think about it. I just told you to smile. I'm not saying anything funny, but some of you are like, had this huge smile. Some of you start to feel good. And it's because life happens in our mind. Our mind honestly does not know what is real or fake. Who knew that? Raise your hand if you knew that. Raise your hand if you knew that. Your mind literally has zero idea what is real or fake. And there's so many ways I can prove it to you. I mean, even magic kind of shows you some things. It doesn't know, right? So whenever you start smiling, guess what? Your brain and your mind actually believes you're happy. So what it does is it releases the feel-good hormones. So that is a super, super important for you to know. And the reason why that is so important for you to know is if life happens in your mind, who has control over the mind? Who do you think? Who has control over the mind? Yes, Nick. Nick said it. Sane said it. Demetrius said it. You have control over your mind. So this means this. Listen, you could be happy anytime you want, to be honest, anytime you want. Now, this is what usually happens. When I'm coaching teenagers, they're like upset. Are they mad about a couple things? Usually it's two things. Either something that just happened in the past or they're mad about something they think is going to happen in the future. Think about that. All right. So like the person said, I'm having a bad day. Why are you having a bad day? Just got in an argument with my mom. Well, guess what? You're not arguing with your mom right now. Right. So why is that a bad day? That already happened. It's not happening now because what our mind does is it relives things. So it thinks it's real. Because think about this. Say, for instance, you got in this huge, huge fight with your parents. How can you still be mad at this moment right now in time? How is it possible? Think about it. When we were doing the exercise like smiling, you probably didn't even think about your mom. When you're playing Fortnite, you probably didn't think about your mom. When you're waking up in the morning and you're brushing your teeth, you probably didn't think about the argument. So you're not upset. But guess what happens? When you start to think about your parents or your mom in the fight, then you start to get upset. And this person said, I'm mad because my phone was taken away. Raise your hand right now if you're on punishment and you have no technology other than you can be on this. But raise your hand if you're like phone less right now. (laughs) So I see three people, four people right now, they have no phone. But when you smiled, I'm certain it didn't even cross your mind. So what that tells us is this, life is about focus. So whatever you're focusing on, that's what you experience. So right now, if you'd be like, crap, my friends are having fun on Snapchat, I can't participate, then yes, you're going to feel bad. But if you focus on something else, you can feel good. Now, the question is this, why is that necessary? Why is it necessary to feel good? Why do you want to feel good? Like, who cares about feeling good? Why do you want to feel good so much? Why do I teach you all these tricks? I like this. Lulu said, because feeling bad sucks. I like it. I agree. To make your life the best. Yes, I like that. To enjoy life. Yes, to be happy. All right, so I like all these things. So let's talk about why is it necessary for you to be in a good mood or to be happy or excited. Several things. One, life is much better when you're happy. Who can agree to that? Who can agree with that? Well, I know all of you are going to say, yes, yes, Eve, it is. Okay, Eve is with me. Yes, of course, because why do you like to do the fun things? Why do you like to hang out with your friends? Why do you play video games? Why do you want a car so bad? Like, why do you want to drive like Sophia? Huh? Why do you want to get your license? It's because you think that's awesome or cool. It makes you feel good and you make you want to be happy. Everybody wants to be happy. All right, so this is it. So that's number one. The second one is this. This is a big one. I want you to think in your mind right now about something that you want that you do not have. Think about that. Something you want right now that you do not have. All right, so someone says better grades, a job, a Tesla, friends, a relationship, a phone, confidence, good grades. I want a sleepover, happiness all the time, to be athletic. I want 100K subscribers on YouTube. Hey, we can make that happen. We got like 256. So if you want 100, we have 256 on here. All right, look, Dave say, hey, I'll subscribe. So listen, success, getting what you want, you need to be in a good mood, okay? It's that simple. It's very difficult to make friends when you're angry. I'm just saying. 
it's very difficult to make straight A's when you're constantly stressed all the time and upset. It's difficult to make money if you're upset. Why is that the case? Who can speak on this? Why is that the case? Why from a, think about from a physiological standpoint, like from a, you know, from your body standpoint, why is it very difficult to achieve success when you're sad, angry, upset, frustrated, annoyed, bored, any other negative emotion? Oh, snap. Nick knows the answer. Come on, Nick. Talk to us. All right, Nick, help us out. I think it's hard to work or make money when you're like in one of those moods because you're not focusing on what you could be doing. You're focusing more on like subconsciously, you're focusing more on the negative emotions or feelings that you're thinking about. And it takes away from the given moment that you could be working to your full potential. Come on, Nick, don't leave me hanging. Come on, man, don't leave me hanging. So that is exactly right, okay? So I'm gonna tell you guys what happens in your body when you are all those negative emotions. Sad, mad, upset, frustrated, depressed, anxious, bored, uh, you know, whatever other emotion you wanna throw in there, I'm gonna tell you a few things happen. Who've heard of fight or flight? So this is literally what happens to your body. Your body, actually, when you're stressed or sad or mad, your body literally starts to release cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. This happens in your body. It releases this. So that means everything starts to happen. Your breathing starts to get shallow. You breathe faster. Your blood pressure increases. And what's happening is from a mental standpoint, when that hormone is released, your mind does this, tunnel vision. Who've ever experienced tunnel vision before? I'm gonna tell you, I have, this is so cool. I don't recommend this, but I'm gonna tell you what I did. Don't do this, this is stupid. But back in college and my, you know, crazy days, you know, not that I was doing anything crazy, but I had a motorcycle. I had a ZX-14. I love this motorcycle, it was all black. It was super cool and it goes fast, all right? So I did the little power commander so I can break the block that limits how fast you can go. But in any case, we're on the highway racing with my friends, highway. And I went up to 200 miles an hour. Can you imagine that? I'm not, hey, listen, I'm much smarter now. It's not smart to do that. I did it. Luckily, I'm still alive, but it's not smart. Now, just so you know, and I don't have to get into too much, but anytime you're going that fast, generally speaking, cops will not even attempt to chase you, just so you know. So the coolest thing, believe it or not, is that this tunnel vision thing, it's a real thing. At that fast, you literally can't see anything. You only can see just in front of you. Like all of this here is blur. It's like pure, just like a, like, have you ever seen those cool techniques they can do with cameras where it's like the lights, but they're like dragging. It's like, I don't know what it's called, but you can see it in some pictures. But in any case, it's all you see literally is like this. So imagine if something just came from my right or from my left. That's what's a stupid thing to do. Don't do what I did. It's not smart because you can't see it. But this is exactly what Nick was just saying. When you're upset, you literally focus in on a thing. So right now, I got an argument with my mom. What do you spend the rest of your day doing? Thinking about the argument. So then when I ask you, hey, how was your day? What do you tell me? A bad day, all right? So think about that, a bad day. How can one argument cause an entire whole day to go, you know, like a bad day? It's because you're focused on that. That's all you see. Now, keep in mind this, as you're focused on your parents, this argument, you're completely missing everything else. I mean, you could be over here making a friend. So maybe somebody was like, hey, I wanna meet this person, but you're like super mad and you know, so they only wanna talk to you. Say for instance, you had a genius thought, by the way, we all get these genius thoughts, right? We all get these cool ideas and you block the idea because all you're doing is thinking about your parents. So what I'm trying to share with you is, Nick is absolutely right. The reason why you don't want to get stuck in those emotions, because it literally, you miss everything that's happening and you're only focused on those things. That makes sense, Regina, that makes sense. Perfect. So I want to give you a couple strategies so that you do not get stuck in those negative emotions. Because I want you all to be happy, excited, because we know this, this is super true, that excitement and inspiration will lead to success in anything you do. Okay, so if you can maintain those just two quick emotions, if you're inspired and you're excited, you can literally do anything you just told me. You can get a Tesla, you can make money, you can have straight A's, you can make friends. You can, I mean, everything you guys said you wanted. If you're excited and you're inspired. So let's help you get out of this. Now, say for instance, you're in a bad mood. So who are my bad mood people right now so I know? Who's in a bad mood right now? Hey, Vito, you, do you want to tell us about your bad mood or not really? Thumbs up. If yes, thumbs down, no. Oh, snap. Vito's going to tell me about it. Come on. All right, here we go, Vito. Let's listen to Vito's bad moods. 
I woke up really late, like an hour ago, and I got like nothing done because I have a lot of homework. Okay, so listen, who can relate to this? Who can relate to the amount of, oh, I see so many hands pop up. Everybody on the call. So I relate to this, right? Because this is what I hear all the time. It's like, guess what? I procrastinated. I waited to the last minute. I have all this homework. And now I feel like my life is over. Like, it's just terrible. I have to do all these things. So I want to tell you, Vito, and everyone else, being frustrated, being anxious, being annoyed, mad, all the above will only slow you down. Okay, so if you have a homework list about this tall, you have like five things to do. You definitely need to avoid the emotions of mad, anxious, upset, because it literally would do this and you cannot get work done. All right. So I'm going to help you out of how to get out of these upset moods. This is what I want you to do. There is this period in time we call awareness. Okay, so anytime you're upset, say you're furious because you just got in a fight with your parents. Or say you're sad because you just saw your friend left you on red on Snapchat. There's a period that your body will naturally go through or your mind will naturally go through where you will get this quick second. I mean, it's super fast of awareness. Okay, so I'm explaining it to you. Let's give Vito his example. So Vito had a plan to wake up and start studying. And guess what happened? He woke up and he looked, he said, oh, crap, I only have a few more hours left in a day and I got to do all this work immediately he goes to panic mode, okay? Just so you know. I'm gonna explain this to you guys. Everyone goes through this, but I'm gonna explain what happens. Whenever you're upset, whatever the reason, we all go through two emotions very fast. First, we feel sad. So we start to feel sorry for ourselves. Like, oh man, I can't get this done. Oh, my life is over, whatever, right? But then we go to mad, all right? We all go to mad. So we either blame someone, we get mad at someone else, We get mad at our teachers. We get mad at school. We get mad. And then from there, we either go back to sad or we stay mad. All right. Just with most people. So this is what I want to share with you. When you're in these emotions, you know, like Drake, you're in your feelings. There's a period of awareness. All right. So when you are aware, that's when you can break out of it. That is your ticket to get out of the emotion. Are you following me? So this is what happens. So I wake up, I'm mad. And this happens for like, you know, a minute, two minutes. For some people, it could be longer. But immediately what happens, your mind starts to open up. So it goes rage mode or your tunnel vision. And then for a brief second, it opens up. This is your opportunity to get out of that emotion. So the step number one is you have to recognize the awareness opportunity. There's going to be an opportunity when you're upset. I don't care why you're upset. Whatever it is, there's going to be a moment in time where you are aware that you're upset. So that means you're no longer in your feelings. You're actually in the mind and you're thinking like, I'm upset because, and you kind of replay it. That moment, we call it awareness. That is your chance to get out of that emotion. So first you have to identify when you're aware. Second is you have to get out of the emotion. I'm going to tell you how to get out of any emotion. It may be silly, but this works. You have to move fast, some big movement, it breaks you out of any emotion, some movement. So if you're crying and immediately you'd be like, oh yeah, I just broke with my boyfriend. Like you go to awareness mode, you need to do some movement. Start jumping up and down, start waving your hands, do some movement because what that does, it it changes your body. Because remember the mind and the body are connected. So you're in your body at first. I'm sad. (laughs) I'm crying. My boyfriend broke up with me. And then you go to your head and then that's awareness. So there's this period of time you can break out of it. That's basically just means, hey, I'm crying over this guy or I'm crying over this girl. Immediately start doing a movement, whatever that is. Some crazy movement. You can even do like the old, you know, those little, uh, what was that? I don't know if it's Minecraft, but you used to have this like, this little dance. You do this like crazy stuff. I don't even know what it is. I used to see people do it. You know what I'm talking about? A little dance. Have you, got, you know, who knows what I'm talking about? Do it right now. Who knows this dance? It's like, oh, I don't think people do it anymore. But at one point people used to do this little, like, you know, I don't know. We used to do this little movement thing. There we go. Ali got it. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. So do something. You got to move your body. What that will help is break your pattern. Okay. So you'll stop crying essentially. And then guess what? So you go to the body and you go back to the head and then you have to rationalize, rationalize. Who knows what rationalization means? How do you rationalize something? Yes, RJ. See, RJ is the coolest name, by the way. Rationalizing is making sense of something. So for instance, say my mom just yelled at me. This is your opportunity to rationalize. 
maybe my mom is stressed about work. See how that changes? See, that means it's not a personal attack against you. It's not because she doesn't like you. Maybe she's feeling bad about work. That's rationalizing. Let's think, okay, waiting to the last minute. So let's use Vito's example. So how can Vito rationalize his situation right now so he won't be stressed? What can he do? Come on, give me some help here. What can we do for Vito? Come on, Vito needs help. All right, so Vito did exactly what I said. Vito became aware. Then Vito did the renegade or the orange justice dance or whatever he did. He started to move. And then how can he rationalize it? All right, so Demetrius said, hey, just do it now. I have time to do it now. Let's do it now. Okay, that's one way. Don't waste time crying about it. Yep, yep, that's a good one. Do the work subject by subject. Takes break in between. Okay, I hope, Vito, you're writing this down. Just work hard to finish it. Manage his time. Yep. So, Vito, what you could do is this and say, you know what? I have less time, right? So Vito thought he was going to have 12 hours. I have six hours. Guess what, Vito? How can you rationalize that? Vito can say, guess what I'm about to work on? Efficiency, right? Efficiency. Think about that. Efficiency is doing the task faster. That's all you can do. I had 12 hours to do this homework, but guess what? Now I'm going to do six hours. And we know the two emotions that helps you to have success. What are those two emotions? Excitement and inspiration. So the inspiration says, guess what? I know that school is bigger than this test. I know that school or my life in studies is bigger than this assignment. So if I can learn, it's almost like I'm going to try something, right? I'm going to practice. I'm going to try to be efficient, even if I don't do well, right? Like say, for instance, I get a C, I get an F, but the knowledge that I gain on it, working on my efficiency will serve me for the next test. It will serve me through college and everything else, right? Right. So maybe he's starting to look at a bigger picture, not just, oh, this homework got to turn in tomorrow, but like, hey, what skill can I develop during this time? That's inspiration. I'm getting inspired to do this. Like, wait, I'm going to become more efficient. This is going to help me beyond this test or these grades, right? And then excitement is like, hey, I'm about to knock this to the park. I have 12 things to do. Watch me do it in six. That's excitement. It's just the conversations you ha- you're having in your head. Hey, everyone else failed this test, but guess what? I know for sure I'm going to crush it. These conversations you have yourself completely will bring excitement. Now, can you use this for anything else? Absolutely. I want to make friends. I have no friends. Guess what you do when you wake up? Oh, today is friend making day. I'm going to make friends today. I know for sure I'm going to make a friend. As soon as I see someone, I'm going to start waving to them. I'm going to start talking to them. All right. So that is excitement. Conversations in your head brings excitement. So that's how you're going to be successful. Imagine Lulu. Say, for instance, I wanted to be a friend. If you saw me at school and I wanted to make friends, but I'm like this, would you talk to me if I was like this? If I was just like this the whole time, just sitting here and just mad? No. But if I'm like smiling, making eye contact, you and I make eye contact and I give you a high five. I mean, I don't know if you're a high five. I like to do high fives. Like, hey, what's up, Lulu? What's up? You know, just excitement. People are naturally going to smile when they see excitement. When they see other people smile and excited, you naturally smile right? Sure, you're going to get a couple of people who are too cool for school and they're going to be like, oh man, he's weird. That's okay. You're not trying to be friends with everybody, right? We don't need to be friends with every single person in the school. But somebody's going to be like, hey man, this person is cool. I want to talk to them. So you can use it for anything. So make sure that I'm not losing you here. We know that we want to have happy emotions. What are good emotions that we want to experience? So we know inspiration, excitement, happiness, peace, love. Yes, Zion. Joy, yes. Come on, keep them coming. Calmness, enjoyment, yes. Forgiveness, that's a good one. Patience, yes. Care, love, restfulness, courage, yes, I love courage. Confidence, fun. So imagine if you can live your life with all of these emotions. Well, I'm here to tell you the cool thing about life, and this is why I'm so glad all of you guys are on this call and you're in this program, is because the rest of the world the rest of your friends, Larissa, Sydney, all your friends, they don't know about this stuff. So don't use them as an example. They have no clue any of this stuff exists. They have no clue that life happens in your mind. They have no clue that you actually can control your mind. They have zero clue. So don't look to your friends and follow their example. If they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so mad. This teacher is so mean. I can't. And they're just complaining. Guess what? You don't have to go down that road because you know, say, wait a minute. I don't have to do that. Because if I start complaining, it's going to make me feel bad. If it makes me feel bad, I'm not going to get closer to my goals. I'm not going to get what I want. And plus, feeling bad just sucks. Somebody already said it, right? I want to feel good. So how do I feel good? Well, I become aware of it. 
And then I have to do some crazy movement. I'm not saying you have to do it at school. You can go in the restroom and do some fist pumps or something. I don't know. And then you have to rationalize. Maybe my teacher was having a bad day. Maybe my teacher is stressed. Maybe my teacher was not actually trying to be mean. She really was just like passionate about teaching us. And that's how you can maintain these emotions. Does that make sense? Raise your hand. That makes sense. So before I let you go, we have to do something immediately. Okay. This is not something to store away in your brain and you think about it later. We have to do something about it immediately. So that means right now, before we get off this call, I need you guys to put yourself in one of these states that we were talking about, one of these positive emotions. Just pick an emotion. Which one do you want? You want to be at peace right now. You want to be happy. You want to be excited. You want to be inspired. See, Ali got it already. See, Ali's already there, man. He's already started moving. So whatever emotion you want, you choose the emotion, how you feel. This is how you start to take control of your mind. You choose it. Don't wait for like me to win the lottery before I'm happy. Why wait for that? (laughs) Somebody said it would be ecstatic. So I want you to right now choose the emotion and experience. If I want to be happy, what I'm going to do? Smile. I'm going to start smiling. And guess what else I'm going to do? I'm going to think about something that makes me happy. So for me, I love basketball. I love watching LeBron James, my favorite player. So I'm going to like immediately smile and start thinking about like, I cannot wait till he comes back. You know, or I'm going to smile and say, I can't wait to go play with my son, right? No, Curry is not better. Nick, you were on my side at first. Now, I don't know about that. But hey, if Curry joins Jordan, I mean, LeBron, then we're okay. So say for us, you want to be ecstatic. Who wants to feel ecstatic right now? Raise your hand. If you want to feel ecstatic right now, raise your hand. How do Kaylee, Santiago, Carlos, how do you feel ecstatic? Nick, how do you feel ecstatic? Antoine, show me. How do you feel ecstatic? What do you do when you feel ecstatic? See, a little bit. You can't feel ecstatic doing this. I'm just saying. I'm ecstatic. No, you're lying to yourself. Think about the time you were ecstatic last time. You know, the one that comes to mind for me is roller coasters. If you love roller coasters, man, you get pumped up like, oh, I'm going to do this double twist and spin and all this stuff, right? You start to get excited. You're not like this in line. I guess I'll just, you know, you're not doing that, right? So the way to get excited is to put yourself in excitement right now. So what do you do? Kaylee, show me. What do you do when you're excited? Show me. Smile, what else? You move your body. You're like, yes, yes, I'm excited. I'm ex- there we go, Antoine, I see you. I see, okay. So that is how you put yourself in the emotion that you want. If you want peace, what can you do? You can close your eyes and you can breathe. Pay attention to your breathing and you can experience peace and calmness. So this is something that I want us to do right now. You choose your emotion. I don't care what's happening in the past, which means what happened before you got on this call. I don't care what's about to happen, what you have to do when you hang up this call. Some of you have a ton of homework to do. But imagine if you go into your homework excited and inspired as opposed to stressed out. And the way you get in that mood is to talk to yourself and get excited, all right? So hopefully this helps. I want to see you guys get excited. Larissa, get out of bed so you can get excited. Gabe, jump up off your couch, get excited. All right, it's good seeing you. See you later next week. I hope you enjoy listening to the group coaching session. And I also hope that you are able to learn something that would help strengthen the relationship between you and your teenager. Until next time, this is a teen's perspective, helping parents see the future.